Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all-in-one CM4 powered little mini PC known as the AIO CM4 101 by Chipsy. Now these are really made for embedded systems, but I was able to get my hands on a couple to take a look at, and these are really impressive. One of the best accessories that I've seen for the Raspberry Pi CM4 since it's been released. So what this basically is, is an all-in-one CM4 powered mini PC. We got a 10.1 inch touchscreen. We got some I.O. that we can get to on the back here. And overall, when it comes to these all-in-one little Raspberry Pi powered systems, this is actually coming in on the thinner side of things. Now, I've done a lot of reviews on different touchscreen systems for the Raspberry Pi, and they can get a bit bulky. But since this one here is using the Compute Module 4, they were able to thin this thing down. And it offers a bunch of different mounting solutions. So this one here is just for sitting on a desk. Personally, this is the way I like it. But if we take a look at the back of these, it does use a VESA mounting system, and they also offer one of their mounts. So it's kind of like a monitor mount that's fully adjustable. Around back here, we have our volume control and power button, and these are actually powered by a 12 volt, two amp power supply. So we have 24 watts here, and this should be sufficient for the CM4 and the built-in screen. As for I.O., we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We also have USB OTG. This is a micro USB cable, a SIM card slot, because this does support a 4G module that can be placed in the mini PCI Express slot that's inside of this unit, micro SD card reader, gigabit ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, a power LED indicator, our power input, and an RS-232 relay connector. So like I mentioned, this is known as the AIO CM4 101. It's powered by that Raspberry Pi CM4. So when it comes to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it really depends on what module you want installed in here. Raspberry Pi Foundation offers a ton of different variants. You can get them with or without Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and up to eight gigabytes of RAM. A 10.1 inch IPS touchscreen at 1280 by 800 with 10 points of touch, built-in front-facing microphone, optional 4G module, two watt stereo speakers built in, and the operating voltage of this unit here is nine volts to 36. I was really hoping it would run on five when I took it out of the box, but we still have a very wide input range. And these retail for 239. If you wanna add that 4G module, it's an extra $64, and the base stand is an extra 10. So here it is. We got a 10.1 inch touchscreen at 1280 by 800. Not the highest resolution, but it still looks great on this form factor. We also have those built in two watt stereo speakers and they sound pretty decent for what we're getting here. Now the operating system that I'm running here is just basically stock Raspberry Pi OS with a few little modifications and their test app built in. That way I can test all of the built-in extras on this device here, like the built-in buzzer. We also have a front-facing microphone built in, and it's ready to go just like it sits. The CM4 unit that I'm using in this one only has two gigabytes of RAM, and we don't have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it does have 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in, and that's what I'm running the operating system from. And I can tell you right now that the whole user experience does feel a lot more snappier than if I was to run it from a micro SD. Now, even though these are meant for industrial or embedded applications, it doesn't mean we can't have fun with this little unit. We got a nice looking little touch screen here. I got Minecraft running, as you can see. Um, if you wanna do some media playback from YouTube or even Netflix now that we have the ability to do it on the Raspberry Pi, it'll work out just fine. Now we don't have perfect YouTube video playback on the Raspberry Pi, as a lot of us already know, but at those lower resolutions, it does a great job. And with this screen only coming in at 1280 by 800, running these at 720p still looks really good. Now, one of my main use case scenarios for something like this would be an awesome little emulation rig. Now, I did try to boot up RetroPie on it, but unfortunately, I can't get it to work just yet. But I will, and really, all I need to do is dig through their config.txt file they offer with their build of Raspberry Pi OS. But what I have now is a standalone version of a GBA emulator, and as you can see, we do have a little bit of screen tearing. It's not the screen itself because this is the only emulator I've noticed it in. It really comes down to the configuration I'm using with said emulator. Because when I move over to the standalone version of PPSSPP, get really good performance, no screen tearing here. And keep in mind, the CM4 that I have inside of this unit isn't even overclocked yet. Fight with honor. 
So before we wrap this video up, I did kind of want to pull this thing apart. And on the back, I was looking for some screws, but it looks like this is kind of snapped together. So I got this little plastic spudger here. It looks like it's coming off pretty easily. And I'll lightly take the back and the front half apart so I don't break anything. Looks like we got three cables that need to be unplugged. First one being the front microphone. Next up, we have the LCD and the touch panel ribbon. And I think that's about it. So here's the front half of the unit. Just got that 10.1 inch LCD here. Now we can take a look at this. So on their website, it says it only has a single speaker, but there are dual stereo speakers in here. Both of them are working. We also have our volume and power control board. Plus we have this antenna for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into the CM4. I'm going to go ahead and remove this custom PCB. It looks like it's just held in here with four screws. And once I have those out, I'll go ahead and unplug the speakers and we'll carefully turn this over. And our CM4 should be on this side. There it is. So we have our CM4 unit right on this custom PCB. Let me go ahead and get this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna unplugged. This is just mounted to the back half of the case. And yeah, this looks really nice. Um, I don't see any extra connectors except for that mini PCIe slot, which will support that 4G module that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. You can mount it right here. And maybe down the road I could test a PCIe SSD in this unit, but I do have onboard storage with this CM4 module. This is the 4GB model with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and 16GB of eMMC storage. I'm going to go ahead and remove the module, and we'll just take a look under it. I don't think there's anything extra except for the connectors. And here's a closer look. So I've just removed that CM4 module, and this will support any of the CM4 modules that the Raspberry Pi Foundation offers, and they offer a ton of different configurations. So yeah, this thing's definitely put together very well. I would personally like to test out one of those 4G modules. I'll see if I can get my hands on one, but in the meantime, I'm actually going to see if I can add an SSD to this slot here, because I do have an extra one laying around. Not sure if it's going to work out, and I really don't want to burn anything up, but I think it would be worth a shot. It would be really nice to add some faster storage to this unit, even though I'm working with that 16 gigabyte eMMC and we also have that micro SD card slot, it would be nice to run my operating system from an SSD in this thing. So overall, I'm definitely enjoying these little systems. The built-in touchscreen does function quite well. It's only 1280 by 800, but it still looks good on a 10.1 inch screen. And touch functionality is dead on with this thing. When it comes to Raspberry Pi OS, it was never really meant to be a touch operating system. So I would recommend adding something like a keyboard and a mouse. But there are tons and tons of different projects that you could do with something like this. You could build a little mini weather station. You could build a Kodi Media Center. You could build an emulation setup. You could use something like this for in-store signage. I mean, the possibilities are really endless because after all, this does have a Raspberry Pi inside of it. But there's one thing missing from this that I would have loved to see, and that's a built-in battery. These aren't meant to be portable. They're meant to be stationary. That's why they have that vase amount but I will be adding a battery to the white version to make it fully portable. Now, I am running into one issue. These actually run anywhere from 9 volts to 36 volts, and all of the little battery packs that I have that I usually use for my Raspberry Pis and CM4s are 5 volts, so I need to find a solution to this. And when it comes to Qualcomm Quick Charge, if you have it plugged into something like this that doesn't support it, it's not going to go up to that 9 to 12 volts, so I'm only outputting 5 volts no matter what I do with these little battery packs. But I will find a way around this and it'll probably come down to using a buck converter or some 18650 cells. But I would like to keep this as compact as possible because it would be pretty awesome to have a little all-in-one battery-powered Raspberry Pi with a 10.1 inch screen like this. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. That was the first look at this little Chipsy unit. Personally, big fan of it. Got a project planned for the white version that I have here. Hopefully I can get that done in the next few days. I've already ordered some parts to get this ready, so keep an eye on the channel if you're interested in seeing that. If you want to learn more about this, I will leave links to Chipsy's website in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.